friends, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. So this week we'll talk about a topic which is very close to my heart. We'll talk about codependent relationships. So let's look at the definition of codependency. By definition, it means extreme dependence for your social, emotional and physical needs on another person. So what happens is basically you lose your sense of identity when you're in a codependent relationship. The need to seek codependency is often rooted in a person's history. If you've had a traumatic childhood where we experienced a fear of abandonment, fear of not living up to the expectations and lack of vulnerability around a primary caregiver, we tend to gravitate towards people in our adult life who can recreate those feelings with a tinge of security and comfort sprinkled on top. Simply put, we fall for people who feel familiar would make us suffer in the way we need to suffer in order to feel that love is real. So now that we know what codependency is, how do you know if you are in a codependent relationship? So let's look at the signs of codependency. The first sign is emotional manipulation. You get manipulated to do things that you don't really want to do by your partner and that's the very first sign. The second sign is validation. So you go out there seeking external validation from your partner for the events that you're doing. So that's point number two. The point number three is very interesting. So basically isolation. You have a friend circle and over a period of time you get isolated one by one from your friends, from your family and then at the end of it you just have your partner and you've kind of built a world just with your partner which is not very healthy. The fourth sign is the highs and lows, which are a sign of emotional immaturity that ends up with a codependent relationship. So if you're encountering any of these signs, you are definitely in a codependent relationship. If we want to solve the issue of codependency, we need to talk about emotional maturity. Let's take one of the traits, the fear of being alone and try decoding it. The fear of being alone comes in shades. One may feel a lot worse being alone on a Friday evening than on a Monday evening, even though all the externalities are the same. It's the collective conscience of the society that makes us believe that there's something wrong or abnormal with us if we're alone on a Friday evening. We need to understand that we do not have to abide by what society always believes to be normal. We also need to know that our solitude is willed. We could have, had we wanted, been in all sorts of company, but we chose to be alone, rather in the wrong company. Once we make peace with that fact and reject unworthy of love versions of ourselves, we find that we are ecstatic all by ourselves. People often say that the all-encompassing solution is to love yourself unconditionally. But it's really hard to do that when one has spent a lifetime at odds with themselves and often hating the person they see in the mirror. A possible solution to this is to start with making an effort to enjoy at least one thing that you did right on a given day. You made a healthy breakfast on an otherwise not so remarkable day. Just try to enjoy till it lasts. We know that every reprieve is temporary. To borrow a line from Hank William, you will never get out of this life alive. Even if the enjoyment lasts for a couple of hours, it won't last forever. But you don't need forever. We're frustrated when our efforts don't provide a permanent solution. But I would say that it is the wrong way to look at an effort. Most of the time, putting in an effort won't mean anything and you won't lose the fight with yourself anyway. But you can't know which time putting in the effort would work. So put it in every time, every day. Thank you.